I just made myself hungry again. <laughs> What's up everyone? We are Board Game Burger and welcome to our taste test, which is our review format. My name is Rachel and I'll be your food critic for today. For this meal, we'll be diving deep into the beautifully plated Batoku by Dever Games, a game designed by Humane Milan, illustrated by Iru Valls. In Batoku, the path of the great spirit who reigns in the primordial forest is sadly coming to an end. The spirit has one remaining year in which players, as spirits, will be seeking to become the next great spirit of the forest. Do you have what it takes to become the next great spirit? Batoku is played over four rounds, with four phases in each round. In the spring phase, players draw their four cards, choose three to keep, and one to discard. Then if you have any purple crystals, gain the bonus printed on the tile. Then comes the summer phase, or the action phase. In this phase, players have the option of playing a yokai card, using an unlocked die, crossing the river, or passing. To play the card, place it in any slot on your player board. When you do, you unlock the corresponding die, then perform the action listed on the card. Action ranges from gaining resources to taking actions on the board, and sometimes both. If you use a die, take an unlocked die from your player board and place it onto one of the action spaces on the board, and perform the action there at the strength value of that die. If there's already a die at that location, the value of your die must be the same or a higher value. When playing your die, you can increase the value by spending the little cute ambulance next to your board. The action spaces are as follows. Lands of the Yomi. Here you can gain a dragonfly tile, spirit tile, or both. When you have a spirit and a dragonfly tile, you can combine them to immediately gain their bonus. Then there's the stairs of knowledge. Here you gain the movement, which can be spent by taking an available pilgrim on the path of wisdom, or move your spirit on a Botoku card. If your pilgrim reaches towers or gates on the path, you can choose to flip them over and take the bonus there. When moving your spirit on a Batoka card, you gain the bonus printed on that card. At the home of the Great Spirit, you can place a die on any space and take the benefit. At the end of the round, turn order will be readjusted based on the dice placed here from top to bottom. In the Glades of Jade, you can gain resources. At the Forges, players can build buildings, crystals, or both. If you build a building, pay the cost listed on your player board, then place it on an available space matching that building color you gain the benefit in the top left corner. When players place dice in the same action location of your building and the value of the die matches the die printed on the card, the player gains the extra benefit and you gain the benefit printed on the bottom right of that building. If you take a crystal, pay the cost listed under it and add it to your player board, waking another pilgrim. Alternatively, you can cross the river with one of your already placed dice. To do this, reduce the value of the die by one, unless it was a six, which then you would reduce it to a three. Then you place it in the corresponding slot across the river. With this action, you can take the yokai card, the Batoku card, or do two of the other actions, like taking a vision card or placing a pilgrim next to your rock. Once an action is taken, it is blocked for other players. Note, anytime you see the red hand, you are required to pay. Anytime you see an orange koi symbol, you gain those points immediately, but the purple koi's are the points for the end of the game. In the autumn phase, adjust the turn order. In the winter phase, return your dice back to your player board in the locked position without changing the value of the dice as they are taken from the board. Next in the new player order, if you have at least five cards, you may remove one of the cards you have played from the game, gaining the point bonus listed at the bottom. Remove any of the leftover yokai and Batoku cards and then refill them. Then move all the tiles next to the flame symbol. Once four rounds are complete, you count up the points and the player with the most points wins. You gain extra points at the end of the game for being the first player. And the Batoku cards also gain points for each different card you have. For Kadamas, gaining points depend on the positions on the track. Then gain a nice point multiplier for rocks connected to the pilgrims and the goals you have fulfilled on the rocks. Gain points for purple fish you revealed on your player board, also the vision cards, and some other stuff. You do lose points, however, for each vision card you could not complete. Okay, there's obviously a lot going on in this game, so what kind of game is it exactly? I'm glad you've asked. Butoku is primarily a dice placement game with deck building and touches of set collection and tableau building, which makes it a gorgeous spirit point salad. 
The boards are also beautiful, the artwork on the cards are stunning, and the wooden pieces are great. Personally, I wish all of the wooden components were screen printed because the stones and the jade look a little out of place next to the other resources. But what I actually like the most are the artwork Easter eggs, like the silkworms and the monster from Dever's game Silk. As far as theme goes, it's a super interesting theme taken from parts of Japanese culture. But this is an expert level Euro game, so I do have to admit that the theme is only lightly placed onto the actual gameplay. But I do give props for the backstory and the information that is in the rulebook, which is well written, but it's just in a strange order. First, you learn about all the phases and then all the action locations are explained in the second half. Once you know where to look, it is easier to have your questions answered. The player aid is also very well done and it references rulebook pages for future information. The symbology is easy to understand even though you can be a little overwhelmed with the busy board. I, however, would rather have the beautiful artwork than lose it for more clarity. But overall, things are easy to see and find. Not only that, but the main board is double layered. And you all know that double layer boards really candies our bacon, caramelizes our onions, and melts our cheese. Oh, man, I just made myself hungry again. All that sounds awesome, but there are two issues. First, it is the inside of the box. This game is priced at 70 big ones and there is no insert. Everything is just in baggies, thus the setup time is an investment. Then there's the box itself. Now, I understand completely when people hate that a game box is way too big, but this box is just a little too small. Not that Potoku needs it, but there's no room for an expansion. No room for sleeved cards. And depending on how everything goes into those baggies, there's not enough room for all the components that it comes with to fit back perfectly. Now, are those things a deal breaker? Absolutely not. It's not a deal breaker if you decide to purchase this game based on not having an insert or the box being a little too complicated to organize. If you don't buy because of those two things, then you're missing out. I know that expert level games can be tough to get to the table, and we may not have much room on our shelves for games that don't get played often, but I recommend you make room. This is one of the best games Board Game Burger has played in 2021. I love the tension and worker placement and desire to cross the river so you can take first pick of the river actions. Plus, I like getting cool stuff when players take the bonus on my buildings. The crystals are all awesome, whether you use purple, which gives income, pink, which activates with your cards, or orange, which activates when you do the printed action. Each and every action you take in the summer phase can have a great impact. Because the card actions are also quite powerful and improve with the cards that you take from the board. The only part of the game that is more cute than interesting are the little Kodama dumplings. These tracks provide minimal points and create the only negative actions against players because you can at times move other players' dumplings back. But everything else is clear, beautiful, and I dare say delicious. So congratulations, Batoku. You have won our Board Game Burger Recommends Award, an excellent game that I recommend if you like worker placement, deep games, and beautiful artwork. And well done, artist Iduvals. Okay, all right. Now you know that Potoku not only looks pretty, but it also plays pretty too. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notifications bell. Until next time, I'm Rachel, and thank you for hanging out with us at Board Game Burger. Cheers!